So on the screen you have the full uh, five uh, dimensions that we have come up with, and uh, let's make it open. So, um, so what do you think about our framework, our proposal? Uh, do you have any comments, questions? Uh, and let's open uh, open those, those this discussion uh, based on your questions first, uh, and then we can uh, elaborate more on different dimensions and concrete examples. I'm sure we have some first. Regarding youth participation, uh, I know how important it is uh, to not only to address the needs but to discover the actual needs of youth, which are very different and, and uh, depending on the city, mm -hmm. the country, etc. So my question would be, based on your experience, uh, what sort of uh, measures, uh, measurements, uh, can be implemented? For youth people to be, for youngsters to be heard and to be listened to, because uh, uh, not not in everywhere they have, uh, let let's say, the right tools or proper tools to actually speak, uh, whether it is with NGOs or uh, directly with any sort of uh, government branch. Who wants to take that up? I will do this program in every city, in which mayors are obliged to go out. 9 p.m., starting from 9 p.m. and until midnight, into the city, parks, and then just to sit down wherever the young people are just chatting and just listening to them really open, like, you know, like exactly like with the job shadowing. You are not allowed to contribute, you just listen. I really trust, it, truly believe that this would bring out so many valuable things, good things. Uh, uh, for mayors and decision makers in general, and they would be, I believe, surprised that young people are not, they are not offensive, they are really just want to have a right context in which they could say whatever that is on their mind. And I'm thinking about the parks because there is this, I don't think it's a misperception, I think it's a little bit like a, like every person, even the city hall people or the mayor or the decision maker is, is afraid to get out from his or her own bubble because we all live in our own bubbles. So going into an atmosphere which is at 9 p.m. in the park <laughs> with young people, that's very strange for a mayor. So it, maybe the mayor is afraid. So what we could maybe do is to try to facilitate or to, to I don't know, to find the places somewhere in between where everybody feels safe enough to meet. I still think that the park is a good place, especially if it's not warm. Uh, it's safe and uh, it's, it's a good environment just, just to speak. Just one example, and I close with this. Once we did, a, actually in another city, Romania, in Baku, we did this uh, uh, World Cafe format, specifically World Cafe format. Uh, the municipality, for some reason, wanted to close down the main boulevard of the city, so the World Cafe took place in the middle of the, of the main boulevard. And actually the mayor, who is actually younger than me, two or three years younger, he stood, he, he stayed there, you know, there is the podium moment in the World Cafe when everybody just comes up and speaks freely, like Hyde Park in London. So the mayor listened to everything, I think for 90 minutes, and then he took all his notes in every question raised and he said, okay, this is possible, I need to know we will solve it. This is not possible, but you need to know why is it not possible, because it's a very thing, maybe not dependent on the municipality. Mm -hmm. It was one specific Saturday moment which I think worked. I think the problem is that we are not doing this exercise enough. Mm -hmm. no, Nobody is doing, doing mm -hmm. it. But I strongly believe, coming back to the main argument, is that I think that your generation really has opinions. Maybe it's not well articulated, maybe you need to work a little bit on more to, to, to that the problem to be transformed into a structure, but you have it. So what we need to do, older people, is just to find the proper context for you to, to feel safe enough to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May, may I add? Uh, so uh, my words will continue and then confirm what you have uh, already said. And uh, yes, we are regular in, in the municipality of Aydoshina. We are regularly doing uh, a cafe with a mayor. So uh, during the uh, epidemics, it was online. But uh, each, uh, let's say, first week of August, there are two days dedicated to the youth, so the youth base. 
and uh, through the city there are boxes, like wishing boxes, or even especially uh, places where these uh, major events are happening. Uh, so there are especially uh, picture postcards, and you pick one and write down whatever you want to ask the mayor, and you drop in the box. So we have questions ready, and uh, he is offered a nice cup of coffee, and then he is having open uh, discussion uh, in the park, actually, because the small area <laughs> where uh, this event is happening. So this was a very nice event last August, um, and uh, it's um, been uh, going on for quite some time. Uh, but I was trying to emphasize that these wishing boxes with postcards or even, you know, just a, a piece of paper are very useful when we are approaching youth and municipalities in preparing youth strategies. Uh, because there are a lot of opinions, questions there, and uh, as uh, Andres uh, told, that probably not everything is relevant for the mayor. You know? So in these workshops that we are having after we open the box, uh, it's very important to sort things out, you know, this is our responsibility, this good that you have found out, but we figure, let's figure out how to address uh, proper um, uh, people and uh, people who are in charge for the issues. Uh, so, um, but I believe, just to conclude, uh, still for any issue, education is crucial, you know, so uh, not just education that you teach children in school, but through the whole, uh, through, the, through the entire spectrum of generations in the city. Uh, and if you are trying to work with the young uh, and with children at a very early age in school, so they, um, it's self-understanding, you know, for them to be able to speak, to know how the process is going on. And beside that, their parents are learning at the same time, you know, so, uh, not just to ask or demand, but to listen. Yeah. If I may add on that, uh, we had some really good examples. Uh, like uh, high school students once, that they had some issues with the transportation. Mm -hmm. Because the transportation was leaving earlier, and they had much more classes than the bus. So they needed or to leave the classes, or nor to pay the uh, taxi by themselves, which is quite expensive. So what they did with our support of our organization, we did kind of a survey in the school, all the high schools in Kumanovo, and uh, we facilitated for them to meet with the mayor. After they met, they invited him to a, a kind of a focus group or just a round table to sit with them and discuss the issue because of the transportation, and there were quite a lot of results. Uh, they changed, they now after that they have timetables everywhere in the bus stops. They have new bus stops, and now the transportation is even longer. Because Kumarova as such is uh, one of the biggest, is second biggest in the country, but again we have quite a lot of uh, people who are living on the rural part, which is quite uh, expensive to go from the city center to the rural part, and also all the high schools are the city center, so it was quite difficult for them to reach. So basically they use their power, and they use the momentum to meet with the mayor to uh, give them what is missing for them as young people, and it was their voice not sit speaking for them, but the voice of young people, of high school students, regarding that issue. So, I personally I believe that if a group of young people or uh, high school students or students want to reach something, we can do it. But uh, always, uh, as uh, Andrea said already, maybe sometimes we need to help you to articulate uh, better the ideas or I don't know what, but again, it's possible if there is a will. Mm -hmm. Maybe can we, what's your name? Nicolas. Nicolas. Maybe he, I think the question of Nicolas is quite, it's quite big, eh? it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite comprehensive. But in the end, Nicolas, for me, uh, and I, I remember a colleague that had very high responsibilities in the, in the Portuguese Youth Institute some years ago, many years ago, when he was in, in, in public functions, he told me, Bruno, in the end, participation and having participation in place, independent of the age, independent of the group, it's a matter of political willingness. And what does this mean, a uh, matter of political willingness? If we started in schools, from early childhood, the teachers being able to ask the, the, the kids, what do you want to do today in the playground? What do you want to improve in your school? 
What do you think about this? What do you think about that? If we were teach about participation since early ages, for sure that we would have in place the, the, the instruments being a mural, a box, a committee, uh, whatever instruments, digital tools, we would have a lot of more uh, instruments to be able really to have our voices. Eh? Giving another example here of more recent work, uh, and I don't think it's so much the instruments. Eh? The instruments we have a lot, maybe we need to have more, we need to invest in more from murals to boxes to pools, increase digital tools, uh, walk and talks with politicians, uh, being a mayor for one day, we can, we can shoot and uh, all afternoon. Um, what, what, they, what they think, and giving the example of Cascais municipality, we are working there for a couple of years, and basically we were invited to work with them, why? It's, it's the richest municipality in the country, uh, so it's not the norm. Uh, they have like 50 people working on the youth department for young people. The average is like one and a half in the country uh, for a municipality. Uh. They have a department of citizenship and participation, so they really they invest and they put like 10 million on the participatory budget a couple of years when they said they, they need the 10 years of the participatory budget. Um, so it's really not a norm, but what they call us is, they realize that there were so many projects on participation, on youth participation. It was like mushrooms appearing. And they start to realize, okay, but what is the connection? What is the, the connection between the different projects? What is the, okay, because we are listening, the politicians are listening to young people, and I can, I can share a couple of them, but how is this connected? How is this, and how is the consequence of this? Um, so now we are supporting them to develop the participation strategy for, uh, for youth, for the children in youth, it's not just for, for youth, it's also for children. Um, but this was a big concern. This, and on the consequence of their participation and how we ensure quality participation of young people, and then the concern was this, of not looking or on youth, in this case youth and children, as, as something, as something, as, as, as a group, okay? But looking at, at youths, if we could call it plural, okay? How are we engaging the different groups of, of young people on the process? Because they are, they are very diverse, uh, and they need different tools, they need different support. Um, and one of the things, just to conclude, that I've been, and it's not, it's not anything, I think all of the colleagues will agree that it's not a big learning, it's not a big wow, but that we see in practice working a lot is to create spaces among peers, among young people themselves that they're able to discuss, to modulate the instruments, and then to adjust it to the level of what we're talking. We're talking about influencing the communication strategy or the information strategy of the municipality or the tools that they are using, or talking with the councils. So different things, but that they are really able to create spaces among peers of discussing and, and, and participating that somehow are connected, but they really have a lead on, 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 on the space. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things that is working quite well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, because uh, knowing more about the, the tools that can be given to you, uh, it's actually very important because at least where I come from, you can hear people uh, having complaints, yeah, maybe not the best uh, formulated sentences or, or whatever, but for sure uh, complaints that any other adult would have regarding uh, schools or uh, public transport. But people don't even uh, think about uh, complaining publicly because they, they have never been given the chance to actually talk so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's a big part in the thing that you were talking about before, like consciousness of youth participation, mm -hmm. education from early age uh, and so on, like there's a lot of youth generation, like our generation for example, that don't even think about participation as an option. Uh, it's more about uh, not having the tools or at least not knowing about the tools. That's the big uh, block. As well as another problem that came in my mind when uh, with your discussion about Parents, for example, also education on the parents is a big, big topic that is coming out now because in my reality, for example, I remember it was four years ago, uh, we had a meeting with the municipality to discuss about youth mobilities and Erasmus Plus and youth exchanges for the summer. And it was an open meeting for young people to get to know what were the opportunities. 90% of the people that showed up were the parents of the young people, not the young people. And the parents of the young people's main concern were about uh, uh, insurance uh, and prices. And uh, 
<laughs> that day I remember I was like, I'm here to present the opportunities, I'm not here to, uh, like, I don't know, lack of youth participation plus lack of possibilities. I understand this, so that's, that's why yeah, I, I completely go for it, uh, as was earlier said. Uh, this education in two ways for children but also for for parents because we, we somehow in this fast time of uh, immense technology uh, development we skipped a phase i believe and this is the phase how do we monitor for uh, adults and, and, and older <laughs> people how do we monitor what promises have we already achieved or fulfilled you know and this is where participation probably cannot evolve further because it stopped because there is, okay, we did everything, we used proper tools and we were probably educated, but then the other part is not <laughs> educated enough and where we stopped. So um, the tools have to have the final goal, not just to be heard and what I said, to listen, but to be able to together work on the realization of it. Mm -hmm. So, as I mentioned in uh, municipality of Irishina, we have a participatory budget, uh, and every two years, and people are, you know, uh, on local communities and parents, uh, and especially youth, they are, uh, you know, applying for different projects, even youth organizations, and they have to convince. Uh, neighbors to vote for their project because it's an open voting space and you know I will take your grandmother to the store but first go <laughs> to vote for our you know basketball uh, playground and so on so uh, this uh, encompasses all structures youth and also elderly people and uh, it's very nice to see then after the money is assured uh, and voices heard how actually we realized uh, our things, how we accomplish, achieved goals together. Mm -hmm. Actually, very relevant uh, slot in here. Like um, uh, I was hearing from uh, Nikos that uh, what are the tools? No, so what are the given structures? What are what is already existing? Uh, existing, but young people can uh, take us there. Um, uh, possibilities to, to be part of the decision making or to, to participate. And on this side, I, I hear like uh, more, um, we should take, make an open space so that those tools are created by young people themselves. And also, that uh, this shows, uh, in my opinion, the lack of uh, like preparation for participation from the early age uh, so that this, those tools have to be given, those uh, structures have to be provided. And from, from somewhere, we have to start. Um, so maybe a question from me, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, what would be the, the first structures to give so yeah, people can be used to participate? It's provide the setting that they experience the participation and they are supported in co-designing it. So I, I don't think that we need to, for example, a youth participatory budget. I think it's a very good tool or local youth council or whatever. Uh, but. Some of these models, they were, they were useful and meaningful for me, maybe for Andrew, maybe they are not yeah. anymore. Huh? So I think if we provide them the frame to help us understand and co-design these spaces, it's, it's already halfway that what is going to get as, 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 as a project, as an initiative, is going to be meaningful for them. It's on one side. The other side is also, because the formal spaces, they continue to exist, and it's good that they continue to exist, is this preparation for the formal spaces also. Uh, uh, because, again, it's within still the formal spaces uh, that there are a lot of power. Uh, within, within the power, we, uh, our focus, initial focus was, okay, we just focus on participatory democracy, it's this that we want to really make our revolution in terms of democracy. And we realized that in, in a certain moment that to say, okay, but we need to put young people within the formal uh, structures and the traditional forms of participation, because it's also there where, where decisions are being taking place. And if we wait, just that there is a reform on how participation and democracy work, well, <laughs> we need to wait too much. So let's 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 try to, to also foster young people to engage in these spaces. Yeah. Just try to, to contradict myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There is quite a difference. I mean, it's quite important also to ask them what do they want, what do young people want. And for example, we had an issue 9th of May 2015. It was kind of a small incident, our incident. 
uh, in the neighborhood of Berlin to cool these bins. And uh, the parents of the young people were approached us, okay guys, we need to do something because we saw that in the school we cannot do that. So we want to sit together with the young people and to see what is their need. So basically we said to them, we asked, okay, what do you want? Because we see that something is not functioning. We see that now we are even more divided than before. So basically it came from them the idea that, okay, we want some kind of a youth camp. First of all, to get in touch with each other, because even that we're living, we are neighbors, we're not speaking with, uh, with, uh, with each other, Albanians and Estonians. So basically it was their idea to go with the youth camp. And after that it evolved to organize a race in Kumano, a kind of a small marathon, which we're organizing every year. It came from that discussion with the young people in that neighborhood. So basically it evolved to a bigger project and bigger idea. And even the race is not something that we're running to get some prizes, but we're running for inclusivity and for young people to uh, feel that even that if I'm not taking a part of the uh, city that is in Kumanovo, it's not for Albanian state, we are running there. So basically that's the idea where it's coming from. We need to ask and to, be, uh, and to listen to them, not just to ask, okay, I understand, but my idea is better, I'm doing mine. So that's also quite important, not just to, as Bruno said, to give them, okay, local youth councils, here it is, do whatever you want. No, mm -hmm. just to see what kind of methods are functioning there. And adjusting the tools and adjusting the structures to what actually uh, how actually young people function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, concerning the youth participation, but also all the elements of the framework work, I keep thinking of, of um, horizontal things like access of young people to um, um, these elements, and it was. For me, it is, uh, I mean, most explainable is with health and well-being. Um, access of young people to health and well-being services uh, is, in many cities, is not equal. And uh, is there a horizontal, some horizontal measures, you know, measuring whether all the uh, young people in all the neighborhoods have access to health services or uh, whether language barriers are not uh, uh, are an impediment in, accept, uh, in uh, uh, accessing health services. Basically, my question is this uh, horizontal access uh, thing in the frame framework. Um, it's also valid for participation. Yeah. Participation can also have a lot of these kind of barriers, uh, language, uh, geographic uh, areas of the city. And what I'm thinking of is that if you have any project, any kind of measure, any strategy, there always needs, if, if the budget of the, the whole process is 100 euro, then you always need to keep in mind that, that either within those 100 euro, you need at least 7 or 8 euro, which is exactly for this, like addressing the specific aspects of accessibility and equal chances, or if it cannot be included in that budget of 100 euro, then whoever is doing that budget needs to have that extra seven or eight euro above the 100 through which you can address this. The second thought I'm having is most probably, I most certainly have this problem. I don't know how to address equal access, accessibility and equal chances questions in various youth projects. So I'm not good in this, I don't feel. I'm, I know that these need, this needs to be approached. So then the key question I believe in si at city level would be how to engage those actors of the ecosystem who are really good in this. It's like with the youth worker, but it's a special aspect. Maybe youth workers sometimes don't solve this, solve this problem. But in other cases, if it's very specific, I don't know, Roma community, I'm just saying a house number here. You, even as, as a youth worker, you might not be able to work with them because you might have the youth work skills but you don't have the specific working with the Roma, Roma community skills, which might be very specific because it's not just an ethnic minority, it's a social minority, it's very much connected to other social problems. So what I'm saying is that, yes, we always need to have this in mind. It's a little bit like with the sustainability, that is also an issue which is always coming back. But this is how I would imagine this working on the horizontal level, always keeping in mind, always calculating with this, and always having also the financial resources uh, which are, means that you will actually can in, can connect the human resources and whatever you need to be able to tackle this. Mm -hmm. 
And then maybe, maybe I don't know, if I would be a municipality, I would say, okay, any project which is funded by the municipality has to prove its validity, uh, has to prove how it provided specific measures for equal access or uh, equal chances in the project. Why not? Or co when it's mandatory to allocate, I don't know, how much funding for this. No, no, just idea. I'm not sure if you understood your question, if there is a common framework in terms of, 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 of getting these kind of indicators. Yeah, it's something like that. So <laughs> when, when you speak about uh, youth-friendly cities and you speak health, about health, you know, that, that I keep coming back to health because it's, it's the easiest place to speak. It's not only social, but it, it, this access to things is connected to housing, uh, is connected to, I don't know, in Bush, for example, um, students who come from different cities and not, are not local inhabitants, it's more difficult to, uh, for them to access health services. Whether health services are, how, how much of them are equally free and accessible. So whether the, and yes, uh, it, uh, when we talk about infrastructure or spaces for young people, do we have them everywhere or, do we think of being accessible? So my and question I was it's, it's whether clear. there's some uh, some common framework some for, for this. Th there is the European Commission. They, they have a, a dashboard of youth indicators. Okay, that are gathered more on, on regional on regional basis, um, and are more re more abstract. Now it's forty something, or it was. I was checking now. It was revised last year in May last year. So I, I'm not sure how many indicators they have now. But one of the partners on this project uh, from Italy was working on, 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 a, on a very interesting project. It was called Youth Meter, um, and uh, and was collecting these these indicators and trying to bring it to the to, to, to the local level or to the regional level. Uh, again, I'm I'm very keen, and, and and for me, they should be comparable. We should have a framework that compares. Even if we're talking that each locality has their own structure, own process, own culture, whatever, it works to be able to compare things with each other. It works. It's, it's with copy pressure. Okay? If you have it and I don't have it, okay, let's try to see if we have it. So I'm really keen that having a framework that has clear indicators uh, that, okay, maybe my city, I cannot already put this in place because it's still too far. It's still too far from my reality, it's too, too far from the resources, uh, but I can see what exists in other cities, I can see where I want to go. I'm talking about mental health, I'm talking about housing or employment and so on. So I'm very keen to provide a framework that is able to compare and able to assess also where we are, okay? Um, but this is, is my, 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 my opinion. But it's not so common to find it at, at municipality levels inside of the country or even um, outside. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, now many cities, they are uh, the, the, the sustainable development goals, they are creating these kind of frameworks, okay? To able to assess how they are, where they are going and so on. So sometimes it's to, to see, okay, if they are tackling youth, these frameworks, if not, okay, how can we put youth in these frameworks? Because, okay, it's, it, again, makes sense, and contradicting myself again, I'm always contradicting myself, for me, it makes sense to have a youth policy because often they are not in the other places. It's not so visible that they are there. I think in, in, in 10, 20 years, 50 years, okay, maybe we don't need a youth policy because it's so clear that uh, housing policy is clearly addressing, the, 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 the major framework of the city in terms of strategy is, is clearly tackling youth that we don't need, okay? But till, the, till we get there, we need to have an instrument that is forcing these. Uh, Framework for comparing uh, um, indicators in terms of including young people in all spheres. No? Um, speaking of the tools, uh, also of, uh, of working with young people with uh, dif different conditions, different needs, uh, what we've also learned uh, in the uh, in the couple of uh, past projects 
is that um, design of the youth services or design of the activities, actions uh, directed to young people, all of them have to be taken into consideration the diversity of young people, and that's like designing uh, services especially for people with disability, especially for Roma community, especially for somebody else. Uh, but uh, taking into account all possible needs and like, to, uh, including this approach of, um, uh, of integrated uh, services uh, instead of segregating it to the, uh, to the different groups. So that, that will cross uh, through all the uh, sectors, policies and activities uh, with, with that notion. And um, well, uh, we are somewhere on, on the way. Poland has recently adopted a, a bill on uh, accessibility but this regards only public sphere, so public institutions and not private ones. So that the set of obligations to fulfill in terms of access, not only an architectural one, but also in terms of language and all that, but yeah, uh, it's uh, regarding uh, public institutions, administration. More comments on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've explored these two first <laughs> uh, dimensions. Uh, and we still have 10 minutes for three more. <laughs> Feel free. The support in, achieve, in achieving an economic independence, like, I don't know how to approach an argument like that in the terms of uh, how can you ensure support, how can you ensure economic independence to young people in the moment in which Word is going against that. Like the thing, first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that the more by time it passes, the more in Italy it's impossible to get out uh, of your family household in terms of uh, taxation is going skyrocketing and it's literally unsustainable for young people that start working also because the condition for young people like. <laughs> 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 I don't have an actual question for this because I don't even know how to formulate such a thing. But uh, yes, what's the first step toward a sustainable uh, support? <laughs> 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 ask you about the infrastructure, which is very broad, and also uh, I guess in this dimension it's difficult to distinguish between like infrastructure for youth and for the rest of the people living in the city, because like the road, the streets are the same, the street lights are the same, hospitals are, at least in Poland, uh, mostly the same, so uh, it's a common point. And of course, I have an idea, like an intuition, that a city which has an infrastructure friendly for youth is also a city friendly for uh, all the other people. But let's make an experiment. Can you imagine some part of the city that we make it like a youth friendly infrastructure in the city, which collides with the interests of the other generations? So also examples, real or not. <laughs> it's not easy to find a, a place of night of night life that uh, has a lot of elderly living in, the, in this form or this old neighborhood that was transformed into a, now a fancy nightlife environment, uh, um, or even even uh, even a park. Sometimes even a park can be a, uh, uh, can be a clashing area of, of a park that was used for many years from a specific group and now starts to be used with different purpose by a youth group of young people. So I think that is, but, but I see this perspective. I think that a, a city that is, is friendly for children and for youth will be a city that is, is friendly also for the community. But definitely there can be clashes, clashes points. Huh? Yeah, I would like to look at it also from a comic uh, side. Like, <laughs> how can we create a story that a city, youth friendly city, is so hard to live? You know, because of that noise, you <laughs> die from the parties, because of, you know, they installed the electric device to charge your mobiles in the city park, so there is music going from the smartphones and you cannot relax in the park anymore. And I would like to collect a bigger list of your example that a youth city, you know, and we have to leave the city because it's youth friendly. <laughs> I'm uh, thinking of uh, two 
two aspects of this. Although infrastructure is not overrated, I think infrastructure is overrated. Uh, um, if you imagine yourself the question, how much of Krakow are you actually using the city? I would say less than 10%. The routes, the routes you're taking, uh, public transport you're taking, your ways, your paths of how you're using the city, that's your reality. And the reality of a person aged 80 in the city is completely different, the route they are using. So if I would be a city manager, I'm not. I would go very deep into how the city is used by various generation, trying to see the overlappings and trying to see the differences. And then I would try to cluster this because every time the, the, the elderly people will use certain places, young people would use other places. I would also add to this a time perspective because the same space might be used on daytime by the elderly because they are there at daytime because they have time, while in the evening another kind of people, like young people, would use the same uh, space, aka parks or public transport. Uh, another thing I which I would like, because this led me to this question basically, how do you solve you as a city, the problem of the bus at 7.50 a.m. in the morning, which gets overcrowded because at the same moment, young people, most probably the very old people who get up because they are early uh, wakers and they are going to the shop, are at the same moment using the same public transport, which creates a bottleneck. And there is a lot of discussion. Young people are constantly saying at various consultations, since I remember my engagements with young people in Cluj, which is like more than 15 years, why do the elder people need to be on the bus at 7.50 in the morning? They could do their shopping at 9 a.m. or so. And the municipality doesn't, didn't solve this. I think there are some solutions like, for example, in what hours would be the public transport fee uh, free for the elder people because they are using it if you, if you would say, yeah, yeah, old yeah. people could have free transport only from 8.30 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> then maybe they will not be, they would not be on the bus at 7.50. <laughs> Bottom line, infrastructure. And then use elections. And <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad for the youth, it should be free until 8 in the morning to motivate them to wake up early. Maybe so. What I would like to say is that I think that usually even the very crowded cities, I would imagine they have a lot of not well explored places. Uh, remember my idea with the, the uptown, downtown, uh, one of the systemic projects, which comes actually from the city hall. And they are mapping a lot of spaces of companies even, which are not used full time. And they are trying to engage companies in donating two hours every day of that conference room, that space, that hall, that whatever they are having, for activities which are non-commercial. A way of engaging the community. And what they are trying to do is put together all of this, putting it on a map. Eventually, probably an app or something will come up with kind of Airbnb kind of thing, through which you can, you as a youth organization, for example, could have access to a space which can be fitted for your purpose. You will not go into an office building probably, but maybe there is this big hangar which is not used by the company, which can be good for, I don't know, skating around or uh, I have no idea. So it could be a way of using an existing resource which is there physically, but which is not yet well explored. So I would say that in a lot of cases with infrastructure, the solution can be very much in, in existing infrastructure. You don't need necessarily to build a new use center. You need to change an existing place into something which serves the, the need of the young person in a better way, which becomes a de facto use center. Yeah. Not the least, of course, have youth centers in all neighborhoods because you cannot expect a young person to come into the city center every day just because there is a safe space. Because the young person might not, might not have money for uh, pocket money for public transport. Just saying an idea. So existing infrastructure is a very, very good resource, especially in cities which are usually very rich in infrastructure, whatever that infrastructure is. It's more than a village, always. Very diverse. Just to go into was also talking about this to, to support in achieving economic uh, independence. I would change it, to be honest. I would call it youth uh, uh, emancipation, youth autonomy, or something like that. Uh, because I think it's connected with economic development, but also with assessed housing and so on. And I think we have, we have um, again, 
Usually we say, okay, we have to see the bigger picture, so this is not only the responsible economic development of the municipality, but they assume a lot, a lot on this in terms of bringing companies, bringing different things, uh, uh, having the different departments that are focusing on economic development. But we see different, the, from, from the internships, to the job sharings, to the, to the incubators, so there is a, it's a, it's a huge share of diversity of here. Um, I don't know many, I can see in rural, yes, in rural municipalities we have a couple of examples on how municipalities are supporting young people to get there, right? For example, paying the rent for a couple of years, even to five years, now I always remember, or buying the land and giving also, or uh, recovering houses, the reconstruction and so on, um, or uh, paying kindergarten. Now I remember Fundão uh, was paying kindergarten also to young families and so on that would need so uh, but it's more in terms of rural areas that I know some practices in terms of the urban cities I know more national programs that are supporting for example housing that they pay part of the rent but as, as, as a program from the municipality or uh, or are supporting that for example new buildings and so on there is a couple of uh, control costs shall we translate from Portuguese housing for young people and so on but there, there's there's a there's a potential of this huh? Now there is this experience of co-living and co-working that sometimes are, can be supported by the government, also by local governments. So. Just a comment. My perception about municipalities is the fact that they can have this, they have a triple role. One is to administer the space, okay? This is, this is why they are an administrative body. You need to administer the city. The second is you can impose things imposing the taxes, imposing whatever, imposing uh, how the roads are. And the third one, which is not explored, is that they need to inspire. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, even if municipalities don't acknowledge it, whatever their perception about things is, is defining what the perception of the society will be. If you as a municipality inspire to share spaces, by doing it yourself, then probably companies will start to share spaces. If you as a municipality go to work by bicycle as a mayor, you are inspiring others to go to work by bicycle. And I think that because municipalities, of course, they are public servants working in the municipality, so they are this different environment. I am really gentle now. They are, they are a different environment. I can sometimes understand it. They need to work with a lot of bureaucracy, which is not dependent necessarily on them because it's coming from the eternal God of the state. But they need to still be inspired pirated in this. And in the municipality of Cruz, I think there is a, I think they have some 200 something employees uh, within the municipality, not on the, not, not the institution below them, but just the municipality. And out of them, I think 15 people are trying to be inspiring. The rest of them, they are just executing. And maybe we should work a little bit more on that part of the municipality, which is not yet inspiring enough. Because they might, there might be resources, and while they are public servants, those people are also people. They might have some similar problems in their everyday life. So we might find some very, very good things. For example, with Agnes, we are putting ourselves this question. We met one lady one year ago, working in the social service department of the municipality, working with young people every day. We had no idea she existed as a person. She existed in the ecosystem of the municipality. We never met her. And we were putting ourselves the question, how is this possible? Because her bubble never connected with this youth federation, council, decisions, European youth capital world. And our bubble didn't connect with her social service. Uh, and they are having, I don't know, five employees. They are open every day. There are young people actually going there. Same municipality. So we need to connect them, then we need to help the municipality then to inspire. A lot of good things can come up from there. Yeah, that's what staying in connection. No? So this inspiration yes. can also go from the outside, not only within uh, municipalities, I would also ask. But my mind was exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Because when you share the information, even share the results of uh, this week's meeting, you know, so people are starting to think. Uh, they compare or even they uh, get the proper idea. So, uh, of the future uh, plans, and, and this networking is really important. To connect the dots on the bonus presentation. Yeah.
I can, uh, I'm reading now a book from an Italian author that I don't remember. She's, she's a researcher focusing on, on, on governments and what is the, the vision of governments for, for 21st century. And she, she highlights different aspects why, why, why local government should have a, a bigger role. And one of the aspects that she highlights is this, that they, they start to focus on solving problems, uh, reacting. And this dimension of this vision, of this long-term planning and the vision is somehow lost. Being, being, creating somehow the inspiration and the model. Not that they need to develop this alone, okay, definitely yeah. with civil society, but um, that, that we reduced in the last, in the last decades a lot the, the, the functions and the, the, the capacity of the municipalities to be more than just an operational body of, of, of technical solving problems. Uh, um, and it's an interesting, it's interesting, uh, interesting book and approach that goes very much on this, this. I think that Andres is saying, okay, how how they get how they inspire us, how they get inspiration, but how we create a, 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 a territory that somehow he has a vision, okay, he has he has he has a, a perspective. Huh? No city changed massively in less than 15 years. Always big changes in cities are happening in 15, 20, 30 years time span, big cities included. The other thing I like very much, this is a Canadian consultancy called Happy City. Uh, Charles Montgomery, he wrote a book on not Happy City. Uh, it is called Happy City, actually. He is having this argument that maybe every development in a city should start from this perspective of the child. Included in the publications as well. Yes, yeah, the child. Because the child, for example, the child has a, a certain height, okay? So the stop sign on the other side might be too high for the children's view. So you might put another stop sign also at the child's level. Or what the child's safety is, like running down the street, okay? How you can, you shouldn't withhold the child running onto the street, but you should make, enable the environment in a way that if the child runs or bikes on the street, nobody runs over the child. Very interesting. A lot of South American solutions are uh, happening on this, which are good. Bogota, for example. A lot of things change there. You would, ne you would never imagine participatory budgeting is coming from South America. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And with this sentence, we've reached uh, uh, <laughs> hour of the, of the uh, finish. So uh, I would like to uh, conclude that meeting uh, with maybe one thought or observation from each of you uh, regarding the friendly city framework that you want to, that, uh, you want to emphasize or you want to take with you as a follow-up. I will start, I will be fast. <laughs> we, need, we need to validate it. One thing the validation would be this taken home and writing a paper of three pages, maybe nothing more, like how this is actually happening in practice. Because if we can validate it, okay, this is how, maybe there are some slight changes, maybe some uh, things need to be uh, done in a better way. But if we manage to validate it, okay, how is this happening in practice and we find the connecting points, then we can say maybe in one year's time, at least the partners who were involved, okay, we validated it post project, and it seems that this is this was well imagined. Or if we need to make some small adjustments, then we need to make the small adjustments because the world is also changing. I would say it's a good start. It's a good start. It's a basis for for something that I think can can have a lot of potential. Here. A lot of ideas which I cannot wait to be implementing back in Macedonia. And yeah, maybe also potential new project regarding to see how we can validate in all the country in North Macedonia. And you create two on the tools. <laughs> later, later, that's for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, I would like to say that definitely a uh, very good idea, uh, let's say not just for the project, but the <laughs> result itself. Mm -hmm that I really hope would inspire uh, a lot of towns, municipalities, local councils, uh, youth councils uh, to develop and even further and to engage in the process that I would like to say, I believe it could be prepared as post-project process mm -hmm. because uh, yes, it's true, validation, identification of proper tools and so, but we should never forget that uh, our work uh, through this project should be properly monitored, as you mentioned, not just for the indicators, 
uh, sake, but for the sake of uh, credibility of our work. And uh, there are very simple steps, but very important. And as you mentioned, in 10, 15 years, uh, if they are not taken properly into consideration, uh, the credibility might not be as we wish. You know, so um, I hold fists for the very best success uh, of the results. Thank you very much. Uh, with this uh, optimistic words, we will finish today's meeting. Thank you very much for participating, for staying until the end, as I asked. <laughs> um, we stay in touch. Uh, the process continues. Uh, and if you're uh, interested in uh, you know, joining as a partner or uh, being uh, updated with the next developments, um, you know my contact. It's somewhere there. If not, I have yours. I will send you all the uh, like fi fi uh, also fi uh, final publication uh, with the um, presentations from today, uh, so that we can keep uh, this process going. Thank you again. Uh, special from the girls. <laughs> oh, so thank you again. <laughs> <laughs>